Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I record all of my lectures and share all of my educational content in data science to support students, my students, students all over the world and working professionals. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start up with a new series. I create a lot of interactive Python demonstrations and so what I want to do now is just do walkthroughs of these interactivities. Okay, now I want to keep these nice and short. I promise I'll try my best. And so what I'll have is linked lectures and more complete workflows. So this should be somewhat minimalistic. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to start today talking about marginal, joint, conditional probabilities and distributions with a nice little set of interactivities to visualize and understand this. Now for these topics, if you want to dive in deeper, I do recommend I have lectures on probability, frequentist and Bayesian probability. I have lectures on histograms, probability density function, PDFs, and cumulative distribution function, CDFs. You can go ahead and click on those links and check those out. Let's just do a quick recap. When we're talking about probability, we're talking about a measure of likelihood that an event will occur. That event is completely general. It could be a discrete event. It could be an outcome within a bin and a histogram. It doesn't matter. Also, you'll notice my definition of probability here is the frequentist definition. In this discussion, we're not going to talk about Bayesian approaches, although you'll see when we talk about conditionals, you'll see how that is a building block to understanding Bayes' theorem. Distribution. Well, a distribution, now we're looking at a for a feature, or what we used to call them as just variables. It's a description of the likelihood or probability of occurrence over a range of possible values. So these are very useful because when we look at the distribution, we get a sense of what's the range of possible values. Is it more likely to have a low value or high value, i.e. is there skew? We also can see if there's outliers. Here's some examples right here. I wrote some quick code just to insert it right here where I took and built a random data set and I showed the histogram. I then calculated by hand empirically the cumulative distribution function just by sorting the data and assuming unknown tails. There's the cumulative distribution function. It's a mapping of the values of the feature directly to cumulative probabilities. And we all know this. We can calculate the P90. That is the value for which if you go across here, for which there's a 90% probability of having a value even less than that, all of these values down here. Okay, so CDF, histogram, I could have shown a PDF, in that case the axis here would have been in density, and that would give us a measure, oh, much like the histogram, but a continuous representation. And so that does require an assumption of scale, fitting, a kernel, and so forth, but we won't get into that now. Okay, so let's go ahead and just remind you about the idea of marginal, joint, and conditional probability or distribution. A marginal is related to a single event or a single feature. So probability of A, or if we're talking about distribution, the PDF of X, and we're just considering a single feature. Joint is related to more than one single event or feature. So consider the probability of A, B, and C occurring together, the intersection between all three, that would be a joint probability. Or if imagine if we're looking at a three-dimensional representation of the densities over three variables, X, Y, and Z, that would be the joint distribution. We're seeing kind of the interactions between all the features, which is really awesome to do gets harder to do in high dimensions for sure. Conditional, given a condition, the probability of something. So probability of A given B. You notice that we read this as probability of A given B. So we assume B has already occurred. We filter all the data by B occurring. And now we look at the probability of A occurring. Or if we have a distribution, we take and filter the data by some criteria on Y. And then we look at what's the overall distribution for x given y occurred. Now, I'm going to mention the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient a few times. And so let's just remind ourselves of that equation right there. If you look at it carefully, you're going to see that if you remove the standard deviation of x and y down here in the denominator, 
This is simply going to become the equation for covariance. So it's a standardized covariance. And just a reminder, the x bar means the mean of x, the y bar mean of y. So this is centering the product. So we're centering each one of them at, before we take the product. n, n minus 1, we're being rigorous, we're considering degrees of freedom. But I hope you can see that it's really a 1 divided by n summation, meaning it's an average of the products. Okay, and once we've done that standardization, where the correlation coefficient will range between negative 1 to 1. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I promise these are going to be short, so I just want to give a couple details up front. Once again, go to the more complete lectures and demonstrations if you want more information. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to import our packages, get ready, and we're going to make a data set. This data set is a bivariate data set. We have a bunch of points for gold grade versus silver grade. And we see there's a nice positive relationship. In fact, the correlation coefficient is uh, almost 0.7. That's a pretty good correlation between the two. How did I get the data set? I made it up. In fact, I'm just drawing randomly from the bivariate Gaussian distribution. Here's all the parameters. You could go ahead and update this and change it. In fact, I even put the ability to put uh, some weight on a polynomial, a second order behavior. You can put a little curvature in that relationship if you like. Okay, it's minor here, but you could expand it. Okay, let's go ahead and build an interactive dashboard so we can visualize the concept of joint probability. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and look at this. We have our data shown in this form right here. We've got the gold grade, silver grade, y, and x axis, and we bend it up. We bend it to simplify it so we can say, okay, we can set an A event would be a range of silver grades, and a B event would be a range of gold grades. Uh, you'll notice right there, phi is just representing grade. Okay, and so now what we can do is we can change this bin. Watch, I'll just change the silver bin right there and you can see it slid over right here and what it's doing is it's going ahead and it's calculating what is the number of data that exists within that bin so having a silver grade within this interval a gold grade within this interval we're identifying all of those values right there we get five values but we had 1000 data in total so now we can see that we have about 0.5 percent probability is going to be our joint probability. And so we color coded each one of these cells by their joint probability. So let me prove this to you. We're going to slide over one more time in silver. Let's go up in gold. And you're going to see, okay, so 18 out of 1,000. Now we've got 119 out of 1,000. And you can quickly see that this scale right here is based on the frequencies and all these are color coded by the number of occurrences within those bins. Now, if you take those frequencies, you divide by 1,000, you get probability. And so as you're looking at this, you're actually observing directly, uh, discretized by those bins, the joint probabilities between each of those. And that can be a very powerful thing if you want to communicate relationships between gold grade and silver grade. And, and you don't want to rely on a simple linear based correlation coefficient. You can look at all these joint probabilities. You can map them out as I've done here and you can describe them that way. I think that's a very instructive thing to do. Okay, so joint probability within each one of these bins and looking at the whole map, we're visualizing getting a concept of the joint distribution, gold and silver. Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate conditional probability. Next, we've covered joint, now conditional. The conditional looks like this. Now remember, if you're ever struggling with the concept of conditional probability, what you need to remember is that you're shrinking your universe. So in this case right here, we have a silver grade range A. That's going to be our condition. So to calculate the conditional probability of B, given this range of silver in A, so probability of gold in this range, given this 
range of silver shrink all your universe. And so what I've done here is you notice on this side, now I've only color coded those cells by the frequencies within these cells and all of these points disappear. You know, they're just ghost images now. And so what I'm communicating now is this concept of shrinking your universe to A. Now you count the values that are intersection a and B, you got 15 cases, but now the denominator is 94. There's only 94 cases in A. So the conditional probability of B given A is equal to the number in the joint right here, divided by the number in this condition right here, that range right there, 94. And so we go ahead, we have the conditional probability. Now I've color coded each one of these cells, so you can see a nice little discretization of, you could even plot this, it'd look real nice, but you get a sense of what's the conditional distribution for gold given this range of silver values. Now I'll show another conditional distribution example down below that'll be more thorough, but you can get the sense of conditional probability. Let me just go ahead and move through, change the condition. So if I change the condition right here, well now you can see Given a silver range right here, you have very few, only five samples. You have a lot of samples up here, so that conditional probability is quite low for gold occurring in this range. And if we move over one more time, you can see there's actually zero probability of having gold in this range, the B, given the A. And we could go ahead and change A and get a sense of how that changes. So these are conditional probabilities. Shrink your universe and then assess how many values do you have for B given A. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about conditional distributions. I've kind of hinted at them, but I have a really nice demonstration down below. What I've done now is the pink is the marginal distribution. So that's just the, if we marginalize over all possible values of gold, and we just show the silver distribution. So we're basically just creating a silver histogram, that's the pink right there, without regard for the gold values. And if we do that for gold, we get this pink distribution right here. Now we can go ahead and change our conditions. So everybody look at the A right there. That's my condition in silver. So if I change my silver bin, let's move it up. Do you see how the conditional distribution of gold given that silver range is changing? You can see how it's getting higher than the marginal. And that makes sense because if we pick a, a condition of high silver values, we only have really high gold values. And so we get this nice distribution up here, but the marginal distribution was kind of more, more varied and it had a lower mean or central tendency. We can go ahead and shift that back down again. And you can see how it'll shift back and change. So you're getting a sense of the conditional distribution of gold given given silver, a certain bin of silver. You can repeat that for gold. So now we're looking at the conditional distribution of silver given the gold value. So let's go ahead and change that. Gold value, we're shifting it up. And as we shift the condition for gold, the silver distribution is shifting up. Okay, so I want everyone to realize that it's very powerful to look at marginal, conditional, and joint probabilities and distributions, it's a way to go beyond the concept of just correlation coefficients and so forth to be able to understand relationships between features. And those conditions sometimes aren't just picked, uh, like I've just bin them up. Maybe what you could do is you could use specific critical thresholds, physics in form of thresholds, maybe um, based on policy, if you have a threshold for environmental contamination or something, or you have a certain economic gold grade, you could use that information to pick, uh, thoughtfully pick your specific thresholds. All right, I hope that was a useful walkthrough. If you want to go ahead and try this out, this workflow right here is my interactive marginal joint conditional probabilities. And you can go ahead and check that out on my GitHub account. And it is available to you right here, interactive marginal joint conditional. Um, it is a Jupyter Notebook file. All you have to do is install Anaconda, and then you can load this up. It uses standard Anaconda packages. So just run very, very easy to run and go ahead and try this out. I think it's a great tool. Why? 
I believe the best way to learn data science is to play, and that's why I make all of these interactive dashboards in Python. All right, I hope that was helpful to you. Once again, I am Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I work in data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning, and I'm happy to discuss. All right, have a good day.